Welcome to the Flash Performance Garage. Today we're going to go over an oil pressure sending unit that is stuck in the open position. We're going to go through diagnosing it and how to replace it. Thanks for joining me on this episode. This is going to be an easy diagnostic procedure on an oil pressure sending unit on a 2003 Chevy Tahoe. Customer came to me and said that his oil pressure was always reading 80 pounds of pressure. So when I did the diagnostics on it, I noticed that the gauge is sweeping as it's supposed to and going back down whenever you turn the key on and off. But I also noticed that the pressure was always the same whether the car was running or whether it was not running. I wanted to see what the voltage was showing on the computer. And not every time do you have to grab a very expensive high-end scan tool to be able to do these things. Today I'm going to be using the MD-808 Pro. This is a scan tool from Autel Diagnostics. This gives me the ability to read and clear codes and see live data in all modules. Now I don't have the bidirectional controls, but I don't need that today. So this is going to be the perfect tool for the job, so let's get started. A couple of things that I'll point out on the MD-808 Pro. Now the Pro version has all available modules, whereas if you just saw an MD-808, that is only the main four modules. So if there are any other modules, the Pro is going to be able to read and clear codes and see live data in all those modules. Also, this is a brand new tool from Autel, and it comes with a smaller connector. On some of the cars we've plugged into in the past, you have those big beefy connectors for the OBD2, and they don't fit in around the extra trim panel. So this is a sm smaller when it comes to connection. So this is a nice little addition too. So this is wired to the car. Let's go ahead and plug it in. When you first get your MD-808 Pro, one of the things you're going to notice is that every time you push a button, it beeps at you. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over here to settings and go down and beep, and I'm going to turn that off. You don't need to hear that the whole time. You can see what I'm doing. So we're going to go up to scan. We're going to select US and go down to GM. And ask what year we're working on. This is a 2003. It is a TASO, so it's a light. And I want to look at powertrain. So we can go into specific powertrain body or chassis if you wanted to. Uh, I'm just going to look at powertrain this time. We gotta go down and select the engine. This is a 5.3 Z motor. One of the things I'll point out is when you get to this screen, sometimes it asks you for what the VIN number is. If you push the help button, it will tell you, please select the eighth VIN digit. So that is always something to look out for. If you don't know what the tool's asking for, make sure you click on that help button, it will tell you. So this is a, a Z motor, so we're gonna click on Z. Four-speed automatic, and it's going to ask about the transfer case. This is a two-speed active. We're going to go ahead and go into the control module, and I want to look at data display. Engine data. Now that we're in the engine data display, we can select from the engine data one, which is going to be your OBD2 information. That's the generic side. Engine data two, which is going to be the OE side, so more information specific to the OE, and that's where we're going to find all oil pressure. So we're going to go ahead and select that, and then I'm going to arrow down to oil pressure. Now that I've found engine oil pressure, you can see it's at 4.6 volts. I'm going to go ahead and graph that. So I'm going to select graph, so you can see that it's representing 4.6 volts, and then it just auto scales that. An easy way to diagnose the sensor is to start up the vehicle. The oil pressure should change, so we're going to go ahead and start it up. We had a consistent 4.6 volts even after startup. So my next step is to disconnect the oil pressure sensor and see if it changes the information coming through the computer. Now we're out under the hood. We're gonna go ahead and unplug that sensor and see if the voltage changes. So the oil pressure sending unit is behind the intake on the back of the engine on this truck. So we'll go ahead and reach back there, unplug it and watch the voltage change. We can see the voltage dropped to zero. We'll go ahead and plug in the new sensor just to make sure that the rest of the circuit is okay and that it reads correctly. 
With the new sensor plugged in, you can see we're at half a volt. So we know that the circuit between the sensor and the computer is now working correctly. We can go ahead and replace the oil sending unit. There are a couple of special things you're going to need when it comes to replacing the oil sending unit. There's a special socket for oil sending units because of their weird shape. They don't have a normal six-sided 12-point shape to them. They have some rounded corners to them. So there's a special socket just for that. So you'll need one of those. You can pick that up from your local parts store. You're also going to need a rag to wipe up all the blood because all the intake pieces and hoses have sharp angles on them. You're going to cut yourself and you're probably going to need a cuss jar. Those are your special tools. Let's get it installed. One of the things I forgot to mention, before taking the sensor off, make sure you clean it real good with a can of brake clean, spray it all around. Make sure all that dirt and grime is off that ledge where the sensor goes in. That way when you're trying to find the hole, you don't push a whole bunch of dirt into the passageway. So let's get this truck fired up and make sure the fix is done. Now that we've got the sensor replaced, let's start it up and make sure everything works. There you go, another repair made easy thanks to my Autel tools. This is an MD-808 Pro. Make sure you're getting the Pro version so you can see all available modules, reading clear codes, and live data. Graphing capability, can't beat it for the price. Check with your local tool supplier. Buy local and buy from someone you know.